Hi there, my name is Roger Pillimer. I'm an orthopaedic surgeon with a particular interest in impairment assessment. For the past 13 years, uh, a group of specialists have been meeting for a few hours every second month to discuss interesting cases, assessment of impairment and matters of general medical interest. What I would like to do in this session is give an example of some of the issues we discuss and if this proves to be helpful, I'll do the same in future sessions. My intention is to produce one session a month and if this proves helpful, uh, we'll do the same in future sessions. Now, the English speaking world generally use AMA guides to the evaluation of permanent impairment and in Australia, this is modified by the fourth edition of the Workers' Compensation Guidelines. Let us start off by discussing the assessment of the lumbar spine, which is the commonest assessment we need to make. Crucial to this assessment is whether radiculopathy, that is nerve root damage, is present or not. In today's talk, I would like to do two things. Firstly, to highlight the importance of the medial hamstring reflex, which is supplied by the L5 nerve root. And secondly, to suggest a method of testing for radiculopathy of the L4, L5 and S1 nerve roots so that it becomes routine and nothing is left out. As you're aware, testing for radiculopathy involves testing for motor, sensory and reflex function. I'm going to concentrate on the more commonly involved nerve roots, that is L4, L5 and S1. With regard to sensory testing, the dermatomal distribution depends on which book you read. And this is figure 15 of AMA5 showing the L4 sensory distribution on the medial distal leg, ankle and foot, L5 on the dorsum of the foot extending towards the big toe, and S1 being the lateral border and sole of the foot. Uh, with regard to motor testing, this is a page from Jack Last's textbook of anatomy showing that inversion is supplied by L4, extension of the foot and the big toe are supplied by L4 and L5, but mainly L5, E-version is supplied by L5 and S1, mainly S1. Uh, by the way, if you apply the rules in these figures, you will be aware of the innovation of every muscle in the lower limb, but this would need to be the subject of another talk. As far as reflex testing is concerned, we all accept that the knee reflex is supplied by the L4 nerve root and the ankle reflex by S1. Surely there must be a reflex for L5. Well, there certainly is. A number of years ago, I happened to notice in Table 15.2 on page 376 of the AMA5 guides indicating that L4 supplies the knee reflex, S1 supplies the ankle reflex, and that L5 supplies the medial hamstring reflex. This was something I'd never heard of before and had never been taught before. I started asking around and it seems that my experience was fairly general. In fact, in some 45 years of clinical and medical legal practice, I cannot recall ever having read a medical report where the medial hamstring reflex was ever mentioned. So, if this is in fact the case and that the medial hamstring reflex is supplied by L5, then we have been missing out on a vital clinical sign. Can you imagine trying to assess S1 nerve root function without being able to test for the ankle reflex. I therefore started testing for this reflex routinely and found it enormously helpful in diagnosing L5 nerve root lesions. In my opinion then, unilateral depression or absence of the medial hamstring reflex is a valuable sign of L5 nerve root involvement. Right, this then is a recording of a patient with an L5 nerve root lesion on the left side, normal straight leg raising on the right side, on the left side, restricted to about 40 degrees, flexing the knee, then allows further hip flexion to occur. Testing his reflexes. Very brisk. Knee reflexes, L4. Ankle reflexes, S1 and I find this the best way of testing ankle reflexes. Medial hamstring reflex on the right. Again brisk. And on the left, either absent or very depressed. 
Now, testing for motor power, uh, weakness of extension of the big toe, and sensory testing showed hyposthesia in the L5 distribution on the left side. Uh, this then is just a close-up, same patient, showing the risk reflex, medial hamstring on the right side, L5, and the depressed or absent reflex on the left side. And this is another patient, again with an L5 nerve root lesion on the left, risk knee jerks, risk knee jerks, uh, risk ankle jerks, uh, not the best positioning, positive ankle jerks, medial hamstring on the right, risk, and depressed or absent on the left and sensory and motor changes in keeping with the L5 nerve root lesion. If you accept for the moment that the L5 nerve root does support the medial hamstring reflex, what I would like to do is suggest a routine method of testing for the more commonly involved nerve roots, L4, L5 and S1. Uh, this is particularly for colleagues who do not test for radiculopathy on a regular basis. We are going to be testing for six reflexes, three on each side, six sensory dermatomes, three on each side, six uh, tests for motor power, three on each side. So this is then testing for the knee reflex, L4, the medial hamstring reflex, L5, and the ankle reflex, S1. Moving to the left side, knee reflex, and I find this a more sensitive way of testing for this reflex than with a patient uh, lying on the couch. And again, I find the best way of doing this is with the knee slightly less than a right ankle and the hip abducted, flexed and externally rotated. And it's done similarly to testing the biceps reflex with the examiner's fingers over the tendons and then striking the examiner's fingers. And S1. Then testing for motor power, inversion, L4, extension and of the big toe, L5, eversion, S1. On the left side, inversion, L4, L5, S1. Sensory testing, L4, L5, S1. Left side, L4, L5, S1. So the clinical picture for an L4 nerve lesion would be depressed or absent knee jerk, sensory loss on the medial leg and foot, weak inversion, for an L5 nerve root, depressed or absent medial hamstring reflex, loss of sensation of the dorsal the foot going towards the big toe, weak extension of the big toe, S1 nerve root, depressed or absent ankle jerk, sensory loss on the lateral border and sole of the foot, and weak eversion. I have suggested calling this the 666 method of testing for radiculopathy and for those of you with a biblical inclination that's the beast that's Revelations 13:18 check it out in summary I would like to stress the importance of testing the medial hamstring reflex as a sign of L5 nerve root involvement uh, I have no doubt that if you test for this on a routine basis you will find an enormously useful adjunct to your testing for radiculopathy uh, I've also suggested a routine method of testing for the more commonly involved L4, L5 and S1 nerve roots when testing for radiculopathy. Uh, thank you for your attention and hopefully you'll join me in a month's time and until then, Salani Gashle.